Great. And welcome to our discussion of the 2011 movie Mars Needs Moms for Disney Disasters. Now, before we get started, let's open with a question. These don't necessarily have to be Disney-related answers, but who are some of your favorite moms in other movies? That's a good question, because I really love Mrs. Weasley in uh, Harry Potter. Yeah, same. Let's say uh, Elastigirl from The Incredibles. Oh, Another definitely. She's, she's great. Uh, Marge from The Simpsons. Yes, or from The Simpsons, yeah. Or Linda from Bob's Burgers. Yeah, she's good. Yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of what this movie is about. It's about the concept of why Mars needs moms down. This movie did so poorly at the box <laughs> office and panned so critically, it ended up bankrupting Image Movers Digital. Image Movers Digital, they did movies like The Polar Express. They did the Jim Carrey Christmas Carol movie. They did Monster House. They did Beowulf, I think. It may not have been that, but the concept of basically this, the motion capture animation where everything looks a little bit kind of off. You know, even uh, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers kind of made fun of that, where they go to the yeah, end of Canyon like Valley that. and they kind of were making fun of that. Yeah. So do you think this movie would have worked better had it been live action? It might have done, yeah. Maybe the human characters. The Martians yeah, well, were still the, the Martians, in the of course. Yeah, the Martians look ugly either way, but I guess they kind of are supposed to. But, you know, I think Monster House, the difference between, like, Monster House and this was Monster House worked and would have worked as live action or animated because it actually had a good story and characters to back it up. It yeah. could have worked in either format. This is just a terrible film regardless because the characters are annoying yeah. and the character designs are ugly. The only character yeah. I liked was uh, Gribble. See, I don't even like him. I think he's annoying, too. So, I don't know. There was just something about him. I feel like, and I like the whole stuff about him. Him talking about like the Reagan secret mission. I was like, why isn't this the movie? Right, that would have been a lot. For, well, that was actually kind of a joke. He had kind kind of gone crazy for being stuck on Mars for a while. Now the question is, what? How was he getting like food and everything if he was living in the dumpster for all those years? That is a so, good point. He was trying to yeah. he was trying to hide from the Martian cops. And why do the Martians need helmets on their own planet? I guess the air is toxic in Mars. I don't know, but for their own planet though? Like, I don't know. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. This movie has a lot of issues. <laughs> this is based on a book. Yeah, I know, but I didn't read the book. I'm just really good as, as the movie and the movie was terrible it did so poorly that it actually bankrupted the image movers digital let's see how much it made let's see the budget was 150 million budget and it only made 39.2 million did you i oh. I, remember, I remember this being advertised but i don't remember this being in cinema yeah it was it was definitely in theaters I remember that so it only made 39 out of 150 million. And that's with 3D as well, because this is back when every movie was in 3D. Because they all thought, well, it worked for Avatar. Let's make every movie 3D. So even with the extra like two or three dollars, however much they charged extra for 3D at the time, it still did not manage to make its money back. And like I said, it bankrupted the Image Movers Digital Studio and killed the motion capture film as it is. Motion capture as an entire film. Now, there it still works in live action though because it's you got Kirk and Wayne Gollum, because it was the same sense. year the best the motion capture movie came out, and that was Tintin. Yeah, Tintin, but that was not from the original. But yeah, Tintin was. Yeah, I think I blame this movie for the reason there's not a Tintin sequel. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, let's blame this movie. Yeah, this it's one died annoying so because they years. had so much good, good choices for like different shots and stuff, but the character designs just looked a bit too 
like with like PlayStation Two character level graphics. Not that bad, but they definitely looked ugly. Like the the evil Martian, she looks like Isma crossed with ET. She uh, she looked she looked like she looked like Paul the 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 Seth Rogen film, but with a wig on. Yeah, to me, she looked like E.T. mixed with Yzma, <laughs> like super weekly old E.T. Also, um, the message is, is weird because as far as it's which that's fine, but at the expense of the male characters because they throw all the baby boy Martians into the trash can and have them go crazy. Yeah, that was that was a weird message. That was a weird message. That was yeah. a weird message. But it should have been Marcy's parents, yeah. but at that point it would have just been Jimmy Neutron. <laughs> yeah. Simon Wells had known Robert Zemeckis since the mid-80s. They worked on films together. This was Simon Wells' debut film. Yeah. Has he gone on to do anything else? Oh, no, this isn't his directorial debut film. No, he, okay. he's... No, he's... Yeah, say, the director of this... He did, no. I think the he, director also did Prince of Egypt. Yes, he did. I don't with two other people. Yeah. How is he able to do Prince of Egypt, which is fantastic and is my personal favorite DreamWorks film, and then do this, which is garbage? Science so. unexplained. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah, what do you think? This is, yeah, but. yeah, so this was my first time. Watching it, I gave it a two star on Letterbox. It's probably the worst film I've seen so far. But I went in with this uh, tactic, which I do for other movies. This is one of the reasons why I didn't hate Moonfall as much as uh, you did. It's because I knew going into it, it was going to be a bad movie. And when I go into it thinking it's going to be a bad movie, <laughs> I don't hate it as much. So that's why I didn't hate this one as yeah. much. I know what you're saying. It is it is bad. And the whole storyline just kind of made me just know. Uh, every time like, the mum was involved and it was about him saving his mum, I just wasn't really interested. But the whole thing with Gribble and like his and his characteristics, he was kind of like at least... Yeah, you could tell the actor was was trying at least. Yeah. He's the same guy that plays the... One character from Fantastic Beasts, who's the baker. Yes, I like him. Yeah, yeah he, he's in this. That, that's him. So this has a 37% score on Rotten Tomatoes and a 40% audience score. So both for flops either way. Yeah, it's only slightly higher, but yeah, 37%. Yikes. And it's only 5.3 on IMDb. Out of 10. Yeah. Yeah. That's 53% then. Yeah. Yeah. What's the average letterbox score for it? Let's have a look. Yes. I was just reading somewhere that, you know, the girl alien who knows English? I was just reading up Brie well, Larson. This shouldn't have to be her. <laughs> Yeah, Brie Larson auditioned to be her. Uh, so either way, she would have been annoying then. <laughs> yeah, either way, she would have been annoying. Yeah. Two point one. Is that actually, if you watch the first trailer, oof, on, on Letterboxd, two point one out of five. So, if you watch the first trailer for this movie, you'll notice that the kid has a very different voice. He sounds like an adult, and that's because Seth Green was actually the original voice of the character. But there was so much negative feedback to the trailer of how he didn't sound right that they ended up replacing the kid, or the voice of the kid, with somebody who actually was a kid, who oddly enough is also named Seth. But if you watch the credits, you can see Seth Green in the motion capture suit, you know, doing his thing with that. So they made the entire movie with Seth Green and then just had the other kid overdub. I Which like I think Seth. was a better choice because Seth Green was like forty, so he does yeah. not sound like a kid. No, he doesn't. But he's, I he's like Seth Green anyway. So. Yeah, 
that's kind of an odd case of the motion capture and the voice were completely different. Yeah, you can picture that probably happens. Oh, that's probably has happened with the Polar Express as well. No, I think that everybody in the Polar Express did the same voice that was the mocap for it. Right, you just know Tom Hanks. Granted, did. Tom Hanks is like maybe much of the in that movie, but yeah, yeah. So yeah, this did kill the uh, the motion capture industry, except for I mean, video games are still motion capture, obviously. But um, do you think the motion capture thing will ever come back, or is this kind of what killed it? I don't know. I wouldn't rule it out. It might make a resurgent one day. But this yeah. probably explains hopefully, why. Yeah. Hopefully we get a Tin Tin sequel. A tin it's interesting tin. because of this, this one bad example, how it killed an entire industry. Well, let, let's compare scores and box office to other motion capture movies and see if maybe it was That's just a altogether it was just a failed experiment in Hollywood or if this was the one movie that killed everybody else. Polar Express has so a Polar Express. Yeah. Yeah, it's a critical darling and it Best made a lot of money. Odd rat tomatoes. What the uh Polar Express was quite uh I'm lucky yeah. Yep, all the scores. What, what on that box? Oh, Rotten Tomatoes. Pirate Express. Pirate Express. What was it? Fifty-eight percent uh, critics of sixty-four percent audience. You broke. Up there. Oh, sorry, sorry, mate. Yeah, fifty-six uh, percent audience score, sixty-four percent or no, fifty. There, fifty-six percent critics for sixty-four percent audience. Yeah, that's what Polar Express got. And it made a budget of. Yeah, my internet's. Kidding. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, it was a budget of 165 to 175 million. Box office 314 million. For Polar Express. Yeah, Polar Express. Yeah. Well, to be fair, they do keep re-releasing that movie every couple of years. That's probably the total of it as well. Yeah. Because I think that movie uh, became sort of a cult classic after the fact. Yeah. What was the Rotten Tomato score for that? Uh, 53 for critics and 64 for audience. Yeah. See, I think after a while, it started to sort of become a more beloved classic. So I don't think it did initially very well when it came out. So I think the next draw on that list was Monster House. What was the Rotten Tomatoes and the box office for Monster House? Sure, let's have a look. That's what I'm going to do. Right, you can click on the link. Rotten Tomatoes. Ah, it's certified fresh at 75 with the critics. With the audience, one second, 64 again for audience. The 64 for what's your house? Yeah, for audience, 75% uh, for critics. For audience, what was the critic score? 75%. For Monster House? Yeah. Dang. That's a good movie, though. Like, what was the budget and the gross for it? 75 million uh, budget and there's 40 million box office. Yikes. Yes, I guess people yes. just don't like motion capture films. Then. So they... 
No, I think I got bored of them after they were doing it. Yeah, it's, yeah, I think I got bored of it after a yeah. while. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, they, they kind of tried to resurge it with cats, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> no, no. No, Cats was not the right film cats to do. Cats just still on arrival. <laughs> Motion capture. Yeah. That one was just DOA. So. Yeah, I've been meaning to rewatch it. I am also holding on hope that we eventually get a 10 10 sequel, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Give us what we want. We don't need more Mars, need Mums sequels or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I also know that, that uh, Robert Zemeckis was also meant to do a motion capture Yellow Submarine remake. I guess that got pulled because of the this failure. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been interesting. I mean, th that may have worked, but we'll never know. Yeah, well, I guess we'll never know. Yep. Anything else you want to say before we conclude? Um, no, I think that's about it, really. It wasn't really like a big film to really talk about. I think this is a movie that just came and went because of how bad and uh, much of a bomb it is, really. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. it, next was week this your... Was this your first time watching it as well? No, I saw it as a kid, and I didn't like it even as a kid. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when they dropped it on Disney Plus, the year that it that it dropped on Disney Plus, it was like April Fool's Day of that year. So, <laughs> how appropriate because this movie is a huge joke, and it's it not even a, a funny joke. joke. Nope, nope. Hopefully, we're talking about a better movie next time. Well, next week is Bridge to Terror Mythia, so... Ooh. I've not seen that one either. Yeah, don't Google don't Google anything about it, but just Thanks. know that this is sort of my revenge for you making me watch C Grave of the Fireflies and cry at that, so uh, you'll know how it feels. <laughs> okay, I do apologize for that. I, I did warn you it was going yeah. to be... True. To be yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to spoil anything, but it's also quite a tearjerker of a film. So, right, right. And what's the next... first live action uh, film that we're talking about? Nice. And what's our next guess. disaster? Uh, I don't think we're going to do a disaster next. I think next week we're going to do more of a comparison episode. We're probably going to do the older versus new of the Disney Channel Adventures of Babysitting. Because they did the 80s version and they did like the Disney Channel version. And I already told you kind of what they did different. So we're going to talk about those uh, after that. Nice. We don't need to do, need to do like the disasters. No, no, that, that's and do. That's and do. I'll think, of, uh, I'll think of one we could do as well. Yeah. So, especially yeah. because Disney keeps remaking everything under the sun these days. So, yeah. Also, we should uh, talk about we should talk about one of the series as well. So I like the Lilo and Stitch just, series growing up, and I love the show Recess. Yes, that was a good show. Right. Yeah. Right. Thank you for having me on again. Uh, quite quite right, thank you. So the question for you to think about for next week, because the one we're reviewing, or actually no, oh, yeah. So the one for next week is what film? What was the first film to make you cry? Don't say it now. Say it next week. We do much oh, well. thing if you had a little something to think about. All right. Okay. And with that, we'll end it. So thank you for coming on the show again, and we'll see you next week. Always a pleasure. Yes, yeah. yeah, Bridget yeah. Terbeth. I can't wait to check it out. Okay. Uh, bye, guys.